Hello. It's lovely to be here. Sorry for being a few minutes late. It's a very busy day. It's International Women's Day today. So I was speaking at International Women's Day event and it was running just a little bit late. But it's a real pleasure to be here and to be talking to you today. So thank you very much uh, for inviting me. And I'm going to talk to you about our Educate project and the golden triangle that is the foundation of the Educate project and how we see that as a tool for helping us to connect the different stakeholders that really are part of our education systems. And so let me take you back to 2012. In 2012, we published this report called Decod Decoding Learning with uh, colleagues at a, um, a think tank, now a charity called Nesta. And as one of the concluding remarks, we said that industry researchers and teachers need to work closely together to test ideas and evaluate potential innovations before they're taken to market. And I would say throughout the life cycle as well. So we need researchers, industries, schools and teachers to work together. And that's very much the foundation of the original version of this golden triangle. And I framed it at this point in time as being about the kinds of questions that people from the different communities might ask. So as an academic, I might ask myself, how can I better communicate my research to education professionals and companies? And as a teacher, I might ask myself, how can I find what works when using technology to support learning outcomes? And as an ed tech company, I might ask, how is research evidence relevant to me? And how can I find out what teachers and learners think of my product or service? And I felt that if we could connect up these communities, we could improve learning, teaching, and also increase the sales for the companies, important, and also increase the impact that research has on the way that technology is used in teaching and learning. And so we now have uh, uh, the version of the golden triangle that is at the heart of educate and you can see it there within the word and it is about bringing together edtech developers teachers and learners parents people in education people who are part of that education ecosystem and academic researchers and it's all about trying to help bring about more evidence informed educational technology design development and application and so you might well ask, well, how, how do you know if an ed tech company is operating in an evidence informed way? And so we would say that you would be seeing that um, there's an astute use of information, information from research evidence, information from your customers, those practitioners, those teachers, those learners, that's based on their expertise and their judgment, evidence that you're taking into account the local context and that you're looking at the perspectives and the values of the people who are going to be affected by your educational technology. And so the Educate program was born and it was based on this golden triangle thinking about these four key sources that we needed to help the companies who we were working with understand and apply in the way that they developed their technologies and helping educators understand how they could use this evidence to help them better apply those technology products or services within their practice. But as ever, there are a lot of challenges and I think these challenges are still live today. So these are some of the challenges that we identified when we started the Educate project, which was back in 2017. And I'll say a little bit more about, about that in a moment. But it is the case, that unlike many products or services such as medicine and food, an EdTech product can go straight to market without any evaluation at all. Um, doesn't matter whether there's any evidence or not, it can still go out there and go to market. And there's no real systematically operating system for evaluating educational technology. And most of the research that's out there that could really help 
pull together the evidence to help the evaluation of EdTech is not particularly accessible or understandable by anybody other than the academic community. So it's not terribly useful. And to be frank, there's been a lack of engagement. Sorry, I'm going to cough, so I'll just get a drink um, from the academic community with both practitioners and with the ed tech developers. And that's not necessarily a criticism of individual academics. It's not always part of the culture or the reward system for them to make that engagement and they're busy. So it's an extra thing that nobody's really gonna say well done for. So it's tricky. Um, and the same is true of educational practitioners. It's hard for educational practitioners to engage with a research evidence base. They might want to, but it's hard for them to do it. And so we really need to try and do something to help connect all of these individuals around this idea of evidence and evidence informed development design and application of technology in education. And when I talk about education, I mean education in the broadest possible sense. So not just schools and universities and colleges, but also in the workplace, informal learning, across the board, education. And so the Educate programme was born from this thinking, from this thinking about the Golden Triangle and wanting to connect those communities. And over 250 EdTech companies came on the Educate programme between 2017 and the end of 2019, when the first Educate programme finished. And we had at that time two tracks. You could come face to face, come physically to the lab where we were based in London and go through the training program in a face-to-face -face setting. But we also had a blended program where most of the learning was done online, but there were some events that people could come to so they could meet up physically. And we took in our first cohort of only seven companies in June, 2017. That was the first cohort. And as I say, by the end of uh, 2019, we'd worked with over 250 companies. So what did we do with them? You might be asking yourself. Uh, and it was really fundamentally about training because this is a little um, piece of work that was done with one of our partners on the Educate program, British Educational Suppliers Association. When you actually look at research in ed tech, yes, it can help you if you're an ed tech to really <clears throat> evidence the benefits of your product, to be more accountable to stakeholders, um, to hone the development of your product. Um, and that's the message that we were trying to get across. Research is great for business. And so back to that golden triangle again, that was the birth of the operationalization of this golden triangle. And so if we look at it from the ed tech perspective, I'm just gonna go back there because I'm gonna take you through what it means for the ed techs, but also what we're trying to do in parallel for educational practitioners, learners, teachers, parents. But for the ed techs was very much to create an effective ed tech ecosystem with evidence at its heart. So we call it the golden triangle because the three points are the three communities that we want to bring together. And the gold is the evidence. And it's the evidence that we want to bring those three communities together about. And that evidence is about understanding what really works for learners, for teachers, for educational stakeholders with technology, what works when they're using technology, what kinds of design features, what kinds of technologies, and how do we know? And how do people apply those technologies effectively in their practice of teaching and learning? And we looked at working with companies anywhere on this spectrum. So this is an innovation spiral, again, designed by colleagues at Nesta who helped with that first report that I mentioned. And so throughout the first phase of Educate, we worked with companies who were anything from a small single entrepreneur looking to develop a product or service to companies we could work under our funding guidelines, which was re European Regional Development Funding, we could work with companies who had up to 250 employees. So we worked with some much larger organizations and some very small organizations. And they were all somewhere on this innovation spiral. And so we, we didn't select people on the basis of where they were in their 
journey. It was very much about whether they had the appetite and the desire to be more evidence informed. And our objectives of the program that these ed tech companies came on in cohorts, which the first one was seven, but these cohorts became larger and larger anywhere between um, 30 and 40 in total across the blended and the face-to-face -face program. Um, the aim was to develop within those organizations in-house research capabilities. And it was important that there were in-house research capabilities because even if the company got to the stage where they had the money to pay somebody to do the research for them, it was important that they understood what research was, what good evidence is, the kinds of methods that could be used to make sure that they got the right kind of research done. To provide structured training and mentoring and to use, so to apply that learning to develop more evidence informed products and businesses overall. But why do you need evidence? What can you use it for? Well, you can certainly use it uh, for designing more effective ed tech, for increasing accountability to stakeholders, for creating effective campaigns and communications, for commissioning and decommissioning services and products as you realize more which are working for your customers and which aren't, developing funding bids, aligning services with your customers' needs and developing your workforce. And as you can see in this picture, we had awards or edwards as we called them, that we would um, award to our companies as they went through some criteria-based thresholds that would demonstrate that they were evidence aware or additionally that they were evidence aware and they were applying that awareness. Now, as I said, this was funded by the European Union and the original Educate program was based at UCL Institute of Education. And this was very much the way that we took people through the program. So you can see here the, the, the arrow saying towards the theory of change at the top, left on my screen, right on yours. That's the program, research training one, research training two, research training three, research training four. Taking the companies through training about research methods presented to them in an accessible way. We helped them then to develop their theory of change and a logic model, which we'll explain in a little bit more detail in a moment, that would help them demonstrate that they understood that they were evidence aware and then to help them develop a research proposal for the sorts of research they would do within their business to demonstrate that they were applying that learning and that they were evidence applied. And so these were the two names of our Edwards, evidence aware and evidence applied. And to give you an idea of what a program would look like, this was the 14 week program um, that was running in 2019. And you can see that we start off, but this one started in 2018. You start off with a getting to know people. We run through the research training sessions and clinics, and then everybody is allocated a research mentor who is there as the person they can go to for support, either through clinics or through individual one-to-ones. And we ended um, with a show and tell event so that each cohort would have the opportunity to show each other what it was they'd been working on and to celebrate the fact that they'd been part of this cohort. And I have to say that we have a very energetic and engaged alumni um, from all of the companies that we've worked with who went through this program. And we dealt with all of the sorts of evidence. M most companies who, who, come, who came on our program started off wanting to prove that their product or service was better than another product or service or was better than not having a product or service at all. And so they were mainly looking for causal evidence. But as we took them through the course, we, we, we explained that causal evidence is, is obviously extremely difficult to acquire. And, and what you're more likely to get is correlational evidence. So you might be able to demonstrate that, you know, two classes of children using your maths product improved their scores in maths. 
and that, that would be a correlation. There's a correlation between the fact that they used your product or service and their score is increased. But that doesn't necessarily mean that their use of the product actually caused that increase in maths. There might have been some other things going on that actually led to that, that, that increase in math scores. So we very much took people through the differences between different types of evidence to try and enrich their understanding of the sorts of evidence that exist and the sorts of evidence that they might be able to acquire and use. From anecdotal evidence, descriptive evidence, correlational evidence, and as I've said, causal evidence. But the key to progressing through the course was very much helping the companies develop their own theory of change. And that was about helping them to identify very, very clearly what was the change they wanted to bring about? What did they want to be different because people had used their product or service? So in that last example, you might have the change you want to bring about is that children age seven improve their, their numeracy scores in the regular tests that they do by 10%, 20%, whatever. What's the change that you want to bring about? And then you need to think back to what needs to happen to unfreeze the current situation to get ready for that change. And then at the end, when you have brought about this change, how do you make that changed situation the new normal? And this was the theory of change model that we used. And this is an example of the theory of change. And obviously, I don't expect you to be able to read all that um, at this event, I'm happy to share my slides for anybody who would like to read the detail. But this was a theory of change that we developed for a program for educators, which I'll tell you more about in a moment, uh, which was about the helping educators in schools be more effective at applying technology within the classroom. And so we started off with the problem that we were trying to solve. So here we can see it's current ed tech might not address actual school and student needs. And we looked at who our audience was. In this instance, it was school teachers, support staff in secondary and primary schools. What's your entry point to reaching your audience? Clusters of schools for when there is some local leadership and professional glue. So we knew that we needed to get groups of schools that had some connections, what steps are needed to bring about this change. Teachers need opportunity to share how they use and escalate the use of ed tech. Measurable effects, a range of them there. I'm only using one example from each of the columns. More visible teacher engagement with ed tech. Wider benefits, teachers better prepared for future digital times, and then what is the long-term change you see as your core goal? Teachers more engaged in ed tech research and development with more powerful voices. And so this is the kind of theory of change that all of the companies who came on the program would develop during their time with the program. And once they had a theory of change, we would help them to develop a logic model. And the logic model starts at, at the end, <laughs> which is a bit of a contradiction. So, what are the changes that you want to bring about? So you, 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 you've, you've done your theory of change. What is it that are going to be the benefits of the people with whom you're engaging with? And, and, and what change is going to be occurring? And then you work your way back. So what is it that you're going to provide to these people who, for whom you're going to bring about these changes? And, and what kind of experience will they engage with? Um, and if your activities work, what should happen? What will be different? What will you be able to see that's different? And if your activities are successful, can you describe the changes in your users and see the difference there between outputs and outcomes? So the outcomes, the changes in the users, the outputs of what is happening through the use of the product or service. And then for each of these stages, it's really important to specify assumptions. We all make a huge number of assumptions um, when we're conducting research, and it's really important to get those assumptions out there and, and to get assumptions being made by the people with whom you're engaging too. 
And these are just some of the companies that came on the first version of the Educate program and some of the comments that they made, completely new dimension to our work, learned research techniques that would provide useful data for progressing and developing, absolute game changer. And the people who engaged with it, with, with the program could, as I've said, receive one of these Edwards evidence aware, evidence applied. They could receive both of them. In fact, most of the time, the people who um, achieved evidence applied first focused on achieving their evidence aware and then moved on to the evidence applied Edward. And indeed, we had a, a trail at BET, which is a big um, ed tech show in London, where we set people who are visiting the show's challenge of finding all of the Edwards. And you can see how many of the companies that have been on our program uh, were at this show. And these are all companies who'd achieved an Edwards. So back to this triangle that I said is at the heart of the Educate program. And we've just looked at what we were doing for ed techs, but we also wanted to do something for educators. Now, this wasn't part of the original funding um, package to have a program for educators, so it's been much slower to produce, but we have been working on it and we have piloted it because we recognise that one of the biggest factors impacting on the use of technology within education is capacity within the education community. And so we wanted to build that and we recognised it as a problem that was global and we saw the solution as being one about empowering educators with the right ed tech to maximize the impact on lifelong learning. And again, the ed tech where the evidence was clear and the teachers were helping to gain that evidence. And so Educate for Schools or Educate for Educators, but in this instance, Educate for Schools was born, a tool and a set of human processes to support educators to make visible their existing practices and to help school leaders use the tools to gain an overview of ed tech practices and to align these to the school's development plan or similar document. And so we wanted to start off by asking schools what the biggest challenges were for them, challenges for that particular institution. So we would start with the educational leaders in that institution and find out what the main challenges, the learning challenges or the educational challenges that institution was facing were. And then we would try and translate those into classroom level challenges for a group of teachers who had been, who had volunteered or been put forward by the senior leaders that we were working with in the schools. And we would then conduct an audit of the school not just of the technology, but of the technology and the human resource that understood how that technology worked. And then work with teachers to look at the challenges they face in their classroom, to look at the technology that's available to them and the human resource that understands that technology so that then they could put together interventions for using the technology to tackle the challenge in their classroom and to collect some evidence about whether that intervention was or was not successful for that particular group of, of learners. And in that way, teachers were doing a parallel to the ed tech companies in terms of generating evidence that they could then share with their colleagues, with parents, with other educational stakeholders. Because really the success of this kind of thing depends on multi-stakeholder co-design partnerships. We need everybody working together in order to really get the best kind of evidence. And then one can't ignore the fact that as we approach starting the next Educate program, which will start next month, where we're hoping to work with another 250 plus companies over the next couple of years, we can't ignore what happened with the pandemic. And so very, very briefly, I'm going to tell you just a little bit about the research we did to try and understand what was happening during the, the COVID-19 pandemic lockdowns or disruptions in the education system before I just give you a quick insight into what we're doing for the next program on Educate. So huge amounts of disruption due to COVID-19 and we conducted as a team a piece of research, but a piece of research that was aimed at 
educational stakeholders very broadly. So we captured data and evidence from policymakers, parents, educators, educational leaders, ed tech companies, school governors and, trust, governors and trustees from multiple different sources, from Twitter, the surveys to literature reviews, just trying to find out how ed tech was or not, was or was not really helping to support the teaching and learning process in a coherent way during all of the disruption. And our reports freely available on the educateventures.com website. It's been published very nicely by our colleagues at Cambridge University Press. And as I say, there's a, a large volume of evidence and then a smaller volume that's the implications that we've drawn from that evidence. And I'm only going to scratch the surface today. But some of the key findings that I think are really relevant to the next version of the Educate program is that during the pandemic, it was clear that too little attention was paid to the whole ecosystem. When schools, which are just one part of the ecosystem stopped, there was a lot of attention to individual parts of the ecosystem, but not to the whole. And actually it was ineffective connections and communications between the groups and communities within that ecosystem that were the real problems that compromised the integrity of the whole system and disabled it from being self-supporting, which an effective ecosystem would be. And so not, so the connections and communications were super important to see this as an ecosystem. And then secondly, it was important to recognize the diversity of that ecosystem and to acknowledge that not all members of the ecosystem, not all educational stakeholders have the same experience, face the same challenges. And so we used the data that we collected to profile, to build profiles of five distinct personas that could in the future be used to tailor the provision in such situations a little bit more appropriately for the needs of different types of communities. And key to the role of technology is this business of connecting, making sure the ecosystem, the different communities within that ecosystem are well connected so that they can be self-supportive. And these are just three pieces of evidence that I thought were particularly interesting. Parents who felt that communication from school leadership was clear were 10 times more likely to feel confident about their school's handling of the disruption than those parents who did not feel communication from school leaderships was clear. Communication between edtech companies and schools improved. They started to see edtech organizations, that school started to see edtech organizations as being there to help. 60% of the companies we, we surveyed reported offering free technologies, and they also made changes to their technologies to try and help support schools by adding functionality, for example, for home, home learning. And educators, their leaders and parents were all engaged in trying new technologies. 74% of educational leaders, 81% of teachers and 68% of parents reported using or recommending technology they'd never used before, which was such a big transition from where we were previously. And here are some of the comments in the qualitative analysis that we did. We, collect, we did interviews and analyzed those interviews. And you can see there's certainly a mindset that technology has a role to play in education. We're just translating rather than really using the technology to transform. More evidence that we need to continue with the kind of program that Educate is. So Educate 2.0 will start uh, next month, April. And we're trying to recognize in the new program that yes, the golden triangle is a really useful metaphor, but we need to broaden out our perspective of the educational ecosystem. And so we're trying to be more flexible. Yes, we will still have the same sort of program that we had previously, but we're now trying to offer it in different forms as a four week program and as weekend boot camps to try and make sure that we can meet the needs of as many ed tech companies as possible whether they can actually come face to face or whether they can't, we want to be able to try and connect with them and help them to better connect, to build a more evidence informed educational ecosystem. And the other change that we're making to the program is we're also um, integrating and introducing 
our new seven steps to AI readiness training program. So in addition to the research methods training to help build that theory of change and the logic model about how you can collect evidence, we're also going to be helping organizations understand how to make much better use of their data at the business level so that they can really understand how best they can leverage data and AI, data being the core of evidence, to help them be the most effective businesses within the education sector that they can be. So thank you for listening. I'm sorry, I'm slightly over time because I started a bit late.